Greetings to all of you, my Mount Nebo family and friends, and to all of you in Broward County and around the world. We certainly take this opportunity to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Allow me just a few minutes of your time today to share a few words from my heart to you concerning COVID-19. We've been in this battle with this pandemic now for almost a year and a half, and we continue to see the various health and economic challenges associated with this worldwide pandemic. Sadly, this pandemic has taken many lives, both young and old, and certainly we don't wanna endure any more loss of life and persons that are close and dear to us. So I wanna take this time today to encourage you, my brothers, my sisters, to get vaccinated. If you have not already done so, please, ma'am, please, sir, consider uh, getting a vaccination as this will help us in the fight against COVID-19. Let me just throw something at you, if you will. We trust the doctors, don't we? We trust them for other health problems, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, all sorts of ailments and things like that. Why not trust them now as it relates to COVID-19? Many doctors, nurses, healthcare pro uh, providers, and scientists have put a lot of time and effort in gathering information and data surrounding this pandemic. And they've advised us that the best course of action is for each of us to get vaccinated. Hospitals, as you know, are in crisis mode. The numbers had started to dwindle down, but now we have a rise, a spike due to the Delta variant taking shape in our country and our local communities. Won't you consider today getting a vaccination and not only getting a vaccination, but continue to wear your mask, continue to practice social distancing, continue practicing washing your hands. And if you don't have soap and water readily available, Carry a little uh, hand sanitizer around with you in your car, your truck, whatever you drive, as a way to continue to arm yourselves against this, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. In closing, let me just say this to you. I, if you are looking for more information on to where can I go to get a vaccination, we're gonna have some information at the conclusion of this recording that will point you in the right direction. There will be some links attached that you can certainly go within your local community and get vaccinated. Please, ma'am, please, sir. From Pastor McKenzie, Senior Pastor here at the Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I invite you, I encourage you, I plead with you from my heart to yours, please join us in the fight against COVID-19. God bless you, God keep you, is my prayer. I'm by your side. Oh, when times get rough and friends just can't be found like We come now to uh, pray for all of our children that will start in school on tomorrow. Uh, we also pray for our staff uh, in the school system, all of our administrators, uh, all those who are employed with the school board that will be dealing with our kids, whether it be in the classroom or maintenance, uh, we want to pray for our school board and all of our children. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, God, for these children that you have blessed us with. God, we ask, Lord, that you will look down with concern upon all the children that will enter into the school this school year. We also pray, God, for all of the teachers, all the administrators, everyone that is involved, Lord, uh, with our kids reporting to school, whether it be on the bus, whether it be that the parents are dropping them off or even if they're walking to school. Lord, we pray, Lord, for your divine protection over all of the children. 
God, we ask, Lord, that you will go before them and that you will be in back of them, on the side of them. We pray, God, that you will allow your protection to surround them, Lord, even if they're walking in a group or just by themselves. God, we pray right now for your divine protection. We understand, God, that COVID, Lord, is rampant. And, Lord, we ask, God, that you will protect our children, protect all of our children from the COVID-19 God, allow the kids to understand how important it is to wear a mask. God, we pray, Lord, that the administration would enforce what is needed to protect our children. Oh, God, we ask, Lord, for your protection. God, that no hurt, harm, or danger will come to the children at the school or even on their way leaving the school. God, we pray, Lord, for a sound mind for all those who will be working along with the children. Lord, it's their job to build up the child and not tear them down. It's their job to, to teach the child. And God, we ask, Lord, that you would give them the right mind, give them the right mindset, give them, God, the patience for those that need patience. God, we pray, Lord, that you would give them the right words to say to our children. Oh, God, we pray right now. We ask, Lord, that your spirit would be within the walls, God, that it would surround the buildings, to surround the campus, Lord, that even during the time that they're there and the time that they are away from their God, your presence will remain, that our children will be safe in your arms of care. God, we pray, Lord, for the curriculum that would be provided. God, and our children, our children, God, will have the know-how to understand. God, give them what, they, what is needed. Give them what is needed, Lord. Even during lunchtime, God, give them what is needed. We pray, God, for our parents, that they will support all of our children. God, we pray, Lord, that our parents would not be selfish, but, Lord, that they will see the need of the child and do whatever it takes, Lord, that you will provide for them that they may have what is needed for school. Oh, God, we ask for your presence right now. We pray right now, God, for our, our school board, our board members. God, that the decisions that are being made on behalf of the children, God, will be in your order. It would be of your will. God, we thank you. We thank you for these children that you have given us. And God, we put them back into your hands, that you would keep them, motivate them, Allow them to understand the importance of why school is in place. That they may learn, God. And Lord, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that your will be done in their lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening, Mount Nebo Church family and friends. We praise God once again tonight for another opportunity to engage our hearts and our minds into the study of his holy and divine word. In his word, as you often hear me say, we find life, light, and liberty. In his word, we find life, light, and liberty. Certainly, we are joined this series, How to Live an Overflowing Life, or as we tagged it originally, Life Overflowing. And so tonight, we want to continue to look at that and find out how we can continue to build on this thematic emphasis of how to live an overflowing life. Again, we wanna read our foundational passage, which comes from Ephesians chapter three, verses 19 through 21. <clears throat> and as usual, I wanna read this tonight from a different translation. I wanna read it tonight from the Revised Standard Version, RSV. Verse 19 says, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Father, we thank you once again tonight for allowing us this time uh, that we have together to share with your people a word from you. Father, we ask now that you would fill us with all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we may rightly divide your word of truth. 
God, we give you honor. We give you glory. But most of all, Master, we give you praise tonight. Bless those who are listening and will receive some words of instruction and empowerment from this lesson. Bless their lives and their respective families. Keep them, God, forever in your care. We thank you and we give you praise in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. How to live an overflowing life. We, we can't seem but to like movies that portray the strong and powerful. Movie after movie comes across the screen and it still seems to me that we are drawn to the old cartoon superheroes like Superman, Spider-Man, The Incredible Hulk, or even Batman. We enjoy those who fight, if you will, the enemy and in some intergalactical war and win. And so the question comes tonight, do we really know God? Do we really want to know God? Or are we just happy with some little tidbits of information about him? The difference, beloved, tonight between the truth of God and revelation is quite simple. Truth is where God's been. Revelation is where God is. Let me say that again tonight. Truth is where God's been. Revelation is where God is. Truth is God's track record. In other words, we look at what he's done in the past and that empowers us, encourages us, motivates us to keep on moving forward. Truth is his trail. It's his path, and it all works together to lead us back to him. Miles Monroe, again, as you heard me quote many times throughout this series, said, people who change the world are people who have taken impossible out of their dictionaries. Don't miss that tonight. People who have changed the world are people who have taken impossible out of their dictionary. Well, the word of God tells us in Matthew, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So with God, impossible is non-existent. That, that doesn't show up in his vocabulary. God doesn't look at a situation and come up with an equation that says, this is too big, too massive, too large for me. But every situation is just right for God to handle. Maybe too big for us, but it's never outside of the scope and power of the divine creator. So with that, that leads me into our first thought, if you will. There are some things that the creator has demanded or does demand of us. The potential of a thing is determined by the man's made on it by the one who made it. The potential of a thing is determined by the one who made it. God has made us, what? In his image and in his likeness. In other words, God has placed inside of each and every one of us tonight a little piece of himself, God has already deposited some things inside of us. It now becomes our duty, our responsibility to unearth that which God has placed inside of us. Some years ago, back when they had the, uh, the California gold rush, people would flock to California to go and to search for gold. Part of that process involved mining, unearthing the gold. That is, they had to be willing, once they got there, to dig into the ground to discover what was already there. 
It's not that the goal wasn't there. Somebody had to be willing to unearth what was in the earth. And so I'm simply saying to you tonight that God has already placed inside of you certain things that he has gifted and qualified you to do, but it is now your responsibility to unearth what he has placed in you. Hmm. Ephesians 1, verse 18 through 21 says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called. His holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Verse 21, now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. So we see when we read that text and then others in Ephesians, we see Paul constantly using this word power. Hmm. So then why don't we see this power in our own lives. It's not because it's not available. Why, why is it that we don't see it in more operation? Think about this. Think about this. Most cars today come with what they call standard equipment. There are certain things that the manufacturer have already determined, predetermined, before the car or the truck goes down the assembly line what is to be placed in that vehicle. That there are some things that they say, no matter what classification the car has, it comes with standard equipment. That is, every car has essentially some basic things that are the same. Uh, windows, air conditioning, heat. There used to be years ago, air conditioning was not a standard item in cars. It was a considered to be a luxury item. But now, AC, central air and heat in your automobile, is a, is a standard piece of equipment in your car. Now, if your car has AC, we live in beautiful South Florida, and it's 80 plus, 90 plus degrees in South Florida, and you got your windows up, and then yet you complain that it's hard in your car. My question to you would be two things. One, is your car equipped with AC? The second one would be, if it is equipped with AC, why don't you turn it on? Why are you enduring something that you don't have to when your car is equipped with the tool that will cool you down? Well, that's the same thing when I think about power, when I, when I look at some of us and we're not operating in the power that God has given us, it's not that God has not placed it or given us access to it. We simply have not turned that power on to be operational in our lives. As long as we think that special thing like power are for others in another time, age, or level of spirituality or impossible for ourselves to even tap into, we ultimately suffer. It is only when we begin to see the great things that God is waiting to do in our lives that makes us turn around and seek God's amazing grace. There are some things that the creator demands of us. Let me tell you this. 
You can do everything God asks. <laughs> I know for some that may seem like a shock. You might say, well, I don't know about that, Pastor. No, listen to what I'm saying. You can do everything that God asks. Listen, God never asks you to do something that he has not given you the ability, the talent to do. No, that, that would be unfair of God to make a demand on you to do something that he has not equipped you to do. But everything God asks you to do is because he has already equipped you. He's already deposited that thing inside of you. And now we just need the courage to do what he's asking us to do. Here it is. Here's one. When God says, love your enemies, <laughs> don't start listening for reasons why you can't love your enemies. No. God has already given us the ability to do that. I know it's a major ask. I know it's, it can be hard to do sometimes, but it is not an impossible task. The ability to love is built in. It's there, so we cannot make excuses, not legitimately, why we cannot love our enemies. Here it is. God would ask for it if it wasn't available. Let me say that again. God wouldn't ask for it if it wasn't available. God has wired you and I to do everything that he demands of us. He's already wired us to do it. He's already wired us. He's already given us the ability. He's already given us the talent. He's already placed it inside of us to do everything that he demands of us. God has wired us to produce. God looks at a piece of fruit and says, in you, there's a tree. Think about that tonight. There's a seed in you, and that seed is a tree. Think about it. Whenever I teach uh, lessons, particularly on stewardship and tithing, I, I oftentimes use the analogy uh, of, of an ear of corn. If you look at an ear of corn, depending on the brand of corn, because there are different brands of corn, there's different uh, types of corn. Depending on the type of corn, if you were to go to the store, even right now in the frozen food section, and buy not, not the little half thing of corn, but the, a whole ear of corn, and if you don't have anything else better to do, Count the number of seeds because every kernel represents a seed. Count every kernel on one cob of corn. And if you would count every seed, every kernel on one cob of corn, that is representative of the amount of seeds that that one cob has the ability to reproduce. The way a farmer continues to grow his crop year after year is he keeps planting seeds because every seed has the ability to produce more than was seen. Talk to me tonight. And so simply I'm saying to you, what on the outside may not look like very much to somebody else, God, who not only sees what's on the outside, but he also sees what's on the inside, so he knows what he has placed inside of each of us. So in every fruit, there is a seed, which means there's the potential to bear and do more. God would never ask you to do what he has not already enabled and empowered you to do. Whatever God gives you a responsibility, he also gives you the ability to meet that responsibility. Whatever God calls for, he provides for. Think about that. Whatever he calls for, he provides for. So then, what is the, the real issue? The real issue then becomes that we have to have 
the courage and the faith to walk out what God has said. Remember last week I said to you, and when we were talking about Gideon, God never calls you what other people call you. God would never call you uh, uh, timid, if you will. God would never call you that because when we think about Gideon, God said when he sent the angel, he said, thou man of valor. That means one who is brave, one who is strong. But yet Gideon was hiding in underground because the enemy was in the camp. And so God said, look, you are a man of bravery. You are a man of strength. And Gideon looks around like, who are you talking about? God says, I'm talking about you, Gideon, because I know what I place inside of you. So whatever God calls for, he provides. Look at this. God in Genesis said that Adam should do the earth, that is to dominate the earth. That was his purpose for being in the earth. God didn't create Adam just to sit around, no. God created him to do more. God created him to bloom and to blossom. Mm. If God created us, and has commanded us to dominate the earth, then God is aware that we can do it. Mm. Are y'all going to catch me tonight? If God did not give us the responsibility, God did not give us the responsibility without also giving us the ability. Think about that. How many times have you encouraged a young person and telling them, yes, you, you can do that, baby. You, it's in you to do it. Well, if you can tell somebody else that, God is saying the same thing to you. But so many times, we get in our own way. We block our own path because we doubt the ability that God has placed inside of us. But then let me, let me tell you this. You are more than you or others expect. You are more than you or others expect. Hmm. God is talking about potential and how to live an overflowing life. He, he, he is clearly identifying what lies deep within you. It, it is a blessing to know that God would never demand it if we couldn't do it. He would never demand it. God would never ask you to do something that you couldn't do. Hmm. God would never demand anything He's not already provided for. So again, whatever God calls forth is because he sees it and knows that it's in you. You are so much more than others expect from you. You are so much more than you even expect from yourself. God called us. He sanctified us. That means he made us special. We are a royal priesthood. We are peculiar people. We are chosen generation. Well, who, who chose us? God chose us. Who made us peculiar? God made us peculiar. How do we know that we are marvelous and a great creation? It's because God said so. God said so. And whatever God calls you, it's because he sees it in you. <laughs> God looks beneath the surface. You know, there are people who only look at you from a surface level. They only see what's on the on the top, and if what they see on the top doesn't doesn't look very attractive, then they then they surmise that that you're not all that. But here's an old saying. Here's an old saying: You can never judge a book by its cover. Some that there, there are some things that that are treasures that are hidden within the book, but you got to have. The, the ability, the vision to see beyond the cover and open up the pages of the book and allow the, the deep resources and the treasures, the nuggets, the, the insightfulness of the book to speak to you. But if you solely base your decision and your opinion 
off of the cover, you will miss great blessings because sometimes God intentionally makes the outside look one way because he's hidden something on the inside that's reserved for someone special and someone in particular. Hmm. God knows that there are some people who are always on the prowl. They're always looking. So sometimes God camouflages you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes God will hide you in plain sight. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you're right there, but they don't see it. That's because God has camouflaged you among the trees and the hedges that everybody can't see you. It's because he knows what he's placed inside of you. And if the wrong people invade your life, they will mess your life up. So God hides you in plain sight. He camouflages you. Hmm. <laughs> My God, he looks beyond our unrighteous behavior and he sees righteousness. He sees it, so therefore he calls it. Watch this now. God is not trying to make you into something. God is not trying to make you into something. God is just trying to expose what is already there. Talk to me tonight. Again, sometimes he hides you in plain sight. That there are some things, I'm going back to uh, my high school biology days, that there were some things that are uh, not visible to the natural eye. You gotta take it, put it on a little on a little piece of glass, and then take that little piece of glass and slide it on the, up under the microscope, and then sometimes you got to adjust the microscope so that you can see what's on the little piece of glass. It's on the glass, but you can't see it with your natural eyes. And sometimes tonight we can't see it with our natural eyes because our natural eyes are limited. So we got to tap into the spiritual realm to see what God has already placed inside of us and so God is not calling you to be something. God is calling you to tap into what he's already deposited within you. Hmm. Look at this. Think about this and I'm going to wrap it up here. God wants you to know what his innermost thoughts are about you. Think about that. God wants you to know what his innermost thoughts are about you. Isaiah 55 and verse 8. Let's, let's, let's read that real quickly. Isaiah 55 and verse number, verse number 8. I'll get my tablet to work here the way I want it to. All right. Isaiah 55. And then verse number eight is what we're going to look at. All right. Oh, familiar verse. I'm going to read this. Let me read this from uh, the New King James, New King James Version. All right. You with me? Here it is. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Now, now don't don't rush that verse, but hear with fresh ears what he's saying. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Okay? So what is God saying to us in this verse? What is he really saying? Well, first of all, let's deal with what he's not saying. That's, that's number one. Let's deal with what he's not saying. He is not saying that he doesn't want our ways and thoughts to be like his. God is simply telling us your thoughts and ways are not like mine. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Now, now, does the verse take on a little different context tonight? But I'm trying to get you to have my thoughts. <laughs> My God, if y'all could catch that tonight, it will literally blow the roof off your mind because God wants us 
to have a mind like his. That's, that's where Paul says in Philippians 2, and let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Hear what he's saying. Let this mind, what mind is Paul referring to? The mind of Christ. Let this mind be where? Be in you. And he tells us where it was, which was also in Christ Jesus. So then he picks up on what Isaiah is saying, if you will. Isaiah is saying, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. So what is God not saying? God is not saying that, 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 that he doesn't want our ways and thoughts to be like his. God is saying, here's what I want you to have. I want you to have your mind like mine. Think about yourself the way I think about you. See yourself the way I see you. Have my mind. Romans 12 and 2, New Living Translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. See, it's all about the mind. It's a mind thing. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. The message Bible reads like this. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. That's verse one. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into without fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out, readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to his level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you develops well-formed maturity in you. So God wants you to adapt his mind and attitude towards yourself. He desires that you think about yourself the way he does. Believe his assessment of who you are and what lies within you. The Christian way is not always an easy way and any representations to the contrary are false. There is abundant life to be had, and there is a spiritual victory, and there is joy in the Lord and the feeling of the Spirit. But those things don't come in spite of our trials. No. Most often, my Nebuchadnezzar friends, they come through and with and alongside our trials. They come through with and alongside our trials. Let me close tonight with this. A reminder from John 10 and 10. New King James Version. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Here's, this is the words of Jesus. He says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. That means super extraordinary, more than enough, more than sufficient. He said, I have come to give you that kind of life. Jesus is saying in this text, that's why I came. Hmm. That's why I came. I've come to give you life and to give it to you upgraded abundantly. Uh, that's why I came. The best of all the worlds. I have come to show you greatness by being a servant. 
I've come to die for you, to save you, because you are lost, and I have come to upgrade your lifestyle while you are still here. Challenges and trials occur in life. So to live victoriously, to live an overflowing life, and to ultimately fulfill our purpose, we must live as overcomers in Christ. Jesus has given us a promise that won't change or be altered by events or circumstances of life. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He gives us his Holy Spirit to guide us and to comfort us. God has never lost control. We could always trust him, even in the most troubling of circumstances. Faith flows from intimacy and relationship with God. A life of faith. It's not just about achieving results, but living as one who obeys God, not out of duty, but out of love for the master. God bless you tonight, my Nebo and friends. Hopefully tonight, something that we've been blessed and privileged to share with you in this series, how to live an overflowing life. God never makes demands on us for something that he has not already deposited in us. Whatever God is asking you to do is because he sees what's in you. He sees more than what you even see in yourself. Father, once again, we come before your throne of grace, humbly yet boldly, thanking you for all your many blessings that you have poured into our lives. Father, we ask you tonight to bless us to strengthen us, give us the courage, the faith, the hope that we need to live life the way that you intended for us to live. Help us tonight, oh God, to have your mindset, to cast aside the mindset of the world and put on the mind of Christ. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. We ask now that you will bless those who would hear this word and receive it with gladness. We give you thanks in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Until next time, how to live an overflow.